Hi, I'm Mary Lee Jepson from Pixel T, and I'm back in Taipei, and I'm on the roof deck and uh, with, our, with our screen, answering your questions. So you just returned from Texas where you were at the keynoting uh, conference, right? Yeah, uh, the big display conference of the year, SID Display Week. This is the display conference for the world, or? That's right. That's right. So what were you saying, uh, just kind of, what were you saying in your keynote, kind of? I was talking about how we should be able to sort of follow what silicon designers do, what chip designers do. What we're trying to do with screens is what people have been, who design computer chips have been doing for a long time. And what we do in display is often invent a new molecule and new manufacturing process and take 10 or 20 years to get a new technology into mass production rather than using existing manufacturing techniques to go from specification to mass production in six months. It's as if a computer designer, a computer chip designer chose to use something other than silicon. They may use gallium arsenide or something else, but then they'd expect it to take longer and cost more. So we're designing, we're taping out, if you will, to existing fabs and not changing the processes or the materials. So I guess you must have had a lot of meetings over there with a lot of people? Sure. Everybody sure. loves the screen. So, so what can you share about that? Like, uh, uh, did you like meet the, the whole industry or how does it work? Well, I've been in, I've been in the industry for a long time, so it's, it's uh, a lot of old colleagues from, from many, many years. And so people are quite interested in the screen, and a lot of customers were there and interested in getting yeah. the screens into their products very quickly. Because the LCD, uh, the LCD industry, is, is that kind of like the biggest tech industry in the world? It's bigger than oh, processors it's and all that? it's one of the... I'm just getting up some content here. The... Uh, the Liquid crystal display manufacturing infrastructure is probably the largest manufacturing infrastructure ever created in the IT industry. It's huge. It puts out $100 billion a year of mother glass for, for TFT LCD, but the, the cost infrastructure of each of these companies is larger than that. And so rather than making a new display technology and trying to create the capital investment infrastructure for it, we're using that infrastructure as is, no changes, really no changes. Not just this one thing or just this change to the material. Yeah. And the other rule we had as a startup during the worst economic period of our time was whatever we made had to fit exactly into motherboards as is, no changes. And so there were three rules, no process changes, no material changes, and our products had to fit right into the motherboards without any, without any changes. We failed on number three because on most laptops you can't turn the backlight totally off. You can dim it, but you can't go totally off. So we're asking laptop makers to just change the firmware a little bit to turn off the, the backlight, so and that's okay. <laughs> that's the only little change? That's the only little change. But, uh, I mean, uh, the, the way the, the screen is made, uh, I mean, that's the change, right? I mean, oh, it's very, very new design. We have 20 patents pending on the technology in this screen. It's, uh, it's very, very reflective. It's a neutral white, as you'll see. It doesn't have that green tinge. It looks, I've got uh, a, an e-ink screen over there, a Kindle, you can compare it. Um, yeah. But it says, it says, it's, it's nearly as reflective as that, plus it's got the transmission efficiency of a regular LCD with the color saturation of a regular color LCD. So we'll compare with the Kindle at the end of the video. Okay. And uh, so, so uh, there was a few questions on the internet. Uh, sh should we try and check, check what people are asking? Yeah, the, sure. On the right. gadgets and all these sites? We can look at that. Let me get out of... Sorry, uh, an investor of ours also bought this in... Got, Installed uh, Linux on on his, so we'll. So here's I think, in gadget. I don't have the gamma quite tuned on this unit today, so forgive me. But we if we get to the questions. That's some nice tech, monochrome laptop. Well, it's not the same as your uh, old 286 laptop because uh, it's got high resolution, 200 dots per inch, and also full color, and. Uh, about 180 nits in color. I want it so bad. Something else like my ThinkPad. So can people um, who want it so bad, what, uh, what, what can they do? We're going to be in mass production this fall. We're talking to all the big laptop companies. It just, I should 
I, this is actually I should block the should label block that. on that because it's you know it yeah. really fits into Normally anyone. Normally you don't show logos without yeah, the yeah, contracts yeah. or. Well, we don't yeah. mean to. Um, yeah. We just went to Radio Shack in the U.S. and they happen to to carry this brand, but we don't actually okay. uh, have anything to do. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's not ink. It is not ink. It's standard LCD. Yeah. Uh, just clever design. We changed everything in it. We changed the 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 the, the layers. On, on the, we basically have you know six or seven masks on the, the bottom substrate and five or six masks on the top substrate. Actually, a few less. And we change those layers as well as the liquid crystal mode, and the polarizers and retarders and um, the backlight films and so forth to get the performance that we have. No one really has had access to these huge LCD fabs before. I was able to sort of wedge my foot into the door at one laptop per child after lots of people saying no and got the screen to work from specification to mass production ready in six months. And that was enough for this time we have like kind of an elbow in the door to get this one made. But the thing is that in a normal LCD fab, you've got the team of driver electronics people in an entire building, and you've got the liquor crystal mode designers in a different building all the way across town or in a different town, and you've got the backlight engineers somewhere else. At Pixel Chi, we have these virtuoso designers that sit literally in the same room at desks, and you know, the liquor crystal designer will say, hey, I have an idea, can we do this at the back plane so that I can make this liquor crystal mode work? And, you know, Carlin, who does the backplane, will say, hmm, I don't know, let me think about it. And he'll come back in a couple days saying, well, I can't do that, but I can do this. And then Robert, our sort of virtuoso LCMO designer, will say, huh, well, maybe we could do that if we could this. And so it's sort of a tight group of architects inventing an architecture that's readily mass producible. That's what we do. So do you have like a really, really fancy lab where you experiment for we're, these months? or We've been getting one. We started with a very simple lab, and I think I showed you a lab that I have in my apartment downstairs. But we're getting better labs. We converted actually a, a kitchen in Silicon Valley into a lab, which is actually really great because it's got yeah. great surfaces, cabinets, yeah. sinks, and stuff like and that. And uh, all these uh, 100 billion is industry, uh, what's it called, LCD, is that mostly in Taipei or all of the is many other countries, many um, other places? Pretty much four. There's four very large LCD manufacturers that control 80% of production. Two are in Taiwan and two are in Korea. But we located in Taiwan uh, for our head, we've got dual headquarters, San Francisco and Taipei, because Taiwan also controls 90% of the laptop industry, Taiwanese companies. And so if you want to work with laptops or devices like laptops, yeah. e-readers and so forth, the decisions are made in Taipei. And if you're not in Taipei, it's... Yeah. We find it's almost how, like we don't exist. How come they, they can manufacture 90% of the laptops? Are they like just so good so they just dominate the whole thing? They are so good. I mean, they, they outsourced mass production, a lot of it to China, but the control still rests in companies like Quanta, Compal, Foxconn, and so forth, and many others, MyTech and Vintech. And right. I don't mean to miss anybody, okay. but there's a, a number of very powerful ones. How did they do it? That's a mystery. Yeah. But they, they wanted it, they did it. I mean, is it a, it's been well studied. I don't really mean it. Yeah. It's a mystery. But uh, they, they certainly did it. They actually went, I saw a recent report that Taiwan is down to 89.6% of laptop sort of numbers yeah. worldwide. And so it's almost a national crisis. They went below 90% and they've oh, no. got to get the share back, <laughs> right? So let's check uh, some other question. Okay, another question. Um, it's not e-ink, no, it's a transflective screen. It's not like the Zorus SL550. Well, this is a 200 dot per inch screen that looks like, um, you know, electrophoretic in, in room light and has very great color saturation and is, you know, 120, I think, DPI in color mode with 40% NTSC color gamut. So it's different, and there's no greenish tinge to it, um, very readable outside and in. I mean, I can show you some movie here. I think I have, I think this is tuned. I put Slumdog on here, hold on a sec. So, you know, this is in black and white here, because, yeah. but you can see, you know, 
You couldn't do this on your Zorus 5500. And you could see a little hinting on color, like yeah. a little bit of yellow. Yellow. Which is really interesting because people wonder how maps will look in black and white. But in fact, there's some color hinting so that you can get some color information even in the black and white mode for things like maps. This is a pretty tough scene, I think, as I recall in this movie. But so it shows the motion in the video. Again, this is in very, very low color. If we just walk into the shade, we'll see this in full color saturation. Should we walk into the shade? It's hot. It is hot. Yeah. <laughs> so um, It's Taipei and it's yeah. June. <laughs> so uh, do you remember some uh, of the other questions that people might have uh, that people often ask you? Oh, yeah. They say that there's some um, idea that it's uh, $200. Here, if we walk into... Here we can see here. color. So there, we're totally in the shade right now. And like some ambient light coming. Yeah, so there's um, you know, the little kids. Remember that part of the movie? So right now we, are in, uh, we can see all colors and stuff, right? Yeah, and if we get even in darker into the stairway, we'll see you know, more color. I just don't want to so fall down the stairs. This is real backlight. Don't, don't fall down the stairs. <laughs> no. So that shows you that you've got the color and yeah. the video on. Can you see the video playing full screen? Sure. All right. So uh, this, this will not disappoint people who just want like normal backlight as well, right? Right. It's just in addition, they've got the high resolution mode for reading and uh, and the reports of $200 per screen are greatly exaggerated. I think the idea there was that the whole device could be $200 yeah. with our screen in it. Exactly. That was a misunderstanding of a few bloggers. Yeah. $200 laptop. I thought, I thought the camera work was great. <laughs> As shaking first happened. I would have killed to have this screen. Now I wish the manufacturers would... So what do you what do you tell to the guy who really really wants to like uh, a few like few thousand people who might want to tinker with their old laptops and just add this inside? Would we are going to something? try to find a way for the DIYers to to do something. Um, we're very concerned to get into high volume mass production. We get to exist if we move a lot of volume with the fab because no one's done this before as a small entity. So we yeah. are. You know, very cognizant of the fact that we have to move a lot of units, but we also want to encourage, cre you know, creativity. So we are finding a way to do that. John might be able to comment on that. No, no. sorry. Okay. So what else do we have? This is from Mobile Mobile Read. Um, battery life. Sorry, he just stupid. Keep showing transflective mode, reflective. I wait. Oh, we can con compare to the Kindle. We'd like to see that. Hey, right. speak up fast. I just ordered the Kindle DX. I like my Kindle too. Apple ordered 10 in LED, not OLEDs. Well, OLEDs are fundamentally not sunlight readable. They omit light. They don't reflect light. At all. Um, there's, no, no, there's no way they can do anything, right? The whole sunlight. idea is that they're an LED, an organic LED. Yeah. LEDs omit light. They don't reflect the light. So in the sun, you can sort of crank up the power, I suppose, to see them outside, yeah. but... But the OLED, the manufacturing is just like tiny right now, right? And that's why they're so expensive. Oh, yeah, I've got a nice um, description. I mean, if you look at the mass production infrastructure of, of the world for screens on a bar graph, which yeah. I have, you can't really see any other display manufacturing technology other than TFT LCD. So why not use that? Again, it's a bit like designing a computer chip and choosing to use something other than CMOS silicon. You could do that, but you be pretty sure it would cost a lot more and take a lot longer. The OLEDs pat OLED patents have already expired. I mean, it takes 20 years for the patents to expire. So people have been working on this technology for 20 years. Billions of dollars have been spent in developing it, and that money has to be recouped somehow. So they're expensive when they get out, and the yield is low, and there's all sorts of issues. And, 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 and if you want black on white for reading, an emissive screen, we know that causes eye strain. It's unclear why that's good. Don't get me wrong, I saw my first OLED sort of color on Active Matrix screen in 2001 at, at the SID conference. And it was always 20 people deep around that booth, Kodak's booth. It looked fantastic. Everybody wanted it in 2001, but now if you compare that to a regular, regular LCD, 
the, the, there's not much difference yeah. anymore. It's really amazing how the incumbent technology can, can keep going. That's not to say that I'm, I'm all for other people doing really cool inventive manufacturing process development. Not at my startup okay. because we can't, we don't, we want to ship quick. But once that is debugged, we'll use that for sure. Okay. So I suggest we do a short video with a comparison with the Kindle and uh, a different video. Okay.